Desperate Measures is currently playing at the York. And I was at a press conference where I got to hear some musical numbers and interview the principals. And then I got to talk to them opening night as well. We're here today. Peter Kellogg, book and lyrics, and David Friedman, composer. Famous and infamous people, and two of the nicest guys I've ever met. So please put that on whatever media I'll <laughs> Desperate Measures, uh, based on what is called Shakespeare's problem play, Measure for Measure. Uh, we are confident that Peter Kellogg made it a non-problem musical. And it takes place in 1885 in the far western territories of the United States, before they were states, out there Arizona way. It is a rough and tumble world out there. And uh, sent there to take care of things, to put things in order, is a very strict German governor whose name I cannot pronounce, who uh, is the law and order government, a governor. He is in favor of the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law, something we all are experiencing every day of our lives, it seems. And uh, here to give you his first song, where he is reading criticism from a local newspaper, The Daily Noose. Uh, oh. The Daily Noose. Uh, uh, is Nick Lyman as the governor, singing, Someday They Will Fail. Justly condemned. And our story, he's a guy that was defending his girlfriend in a bar fight. 
and killed the man by accident. Uh, also connected to the source material, he has a sister who is a novice, a woman studying to be a nun. And um, the sheriff, the good guy, goes to solicit the nun to please come out and soften the heart of the governor. Well, instead of doing that, she manages to have a sweet eye on the sheriff. And this is the nun sort of learning what it's like when you have feelings you weren't planning. And uh, this is Emma Deverstead singing, What Is This Feeling?
imagine that that's uh, Peter Say, who's the sheriff, and Gary Marichek is playing the priest. Thank you for being here. Here we are with Peter Sade. Emma Degerstedt. And you are in Desperate Measures. Oh, yeah, here we are. I play the sheriff. Oh, and I play Susanna. I'm uh, also a nun. So my nun, nun's name is uh, Sister Mary Jo. And how, I mean, a musical measure for measure, you might think this must be the oddest thing you've ever been in. I, when I, I'll admit that when I heard that we were doing it, uh, it was it took me a minute to understand, but reading it on the page, once we get up and, and we started working it, it's such a beautiful take. Um, the adaptation is, is, is loose to serve the musical, but... But this piece is funny and so full of heart, and uh, and it's you know it has a, it has great value, um, and takes those major themes I think from measure for measure. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. That was such a perfect answer. <laughs> and, and it's nice. <laughs> like, that that was all it. That was it. Well, then I'll give you an example. so you can have a perfect answer and leave him speechless. Yeah. It's only fair. I mean, also it's just like. It takes Measure for Measure, which is a horrible, terrible, nasty play, and makes it fun and comedic and enjoyable, yeah. and actually you want to see it. Yeah, it is a very comedic take on uh, that play, and, I mean, we're laughing nonstop in rehearsals, so hopefully that'll be the same experience for the audience as well. Um, but it's really lighthearted, and um, it sticks to kind of the message, like we said, loosely. Um and just the songs are wonderful. Our composer, having the creative team in the room is so fun because we'll have a question about something. We'll be like, oh, great. We can literally just ask the person who wrote this in the room, which is different than when you're doing something that's set in stone. And unlike Hamlet, you don't have to go to the nunnery. You don't force her. Yeah, no, absolutely I yeah. true. In fact, true there's enough. very little forcing this one into anything. So. No, yeah, that is, that is she's a very different um, ingenue like we were talking about. She is very, like, strong strong-willed and um, she's very stubborn which I can kind of relate to in real life so a lot of that is genuine um, but yeah she doesn't and I think that's why he likes her because she puts up a fight and they kind of just they end up complimenting each other they fall in love with her immediately too I don't think that it's immediate in this show they are uh, no. when we meet them they when we meet them, they are feuding a little bit, and they're butting heads, and it all happens slowly. Um, it's again, it's 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 a really beautifully thought out take on, on measure for measure. And as we deal with the if, as we deal with the universal themes that are present in the Shakespeare thing, law versus order, and and the sense of the law versus you know the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law. I think the same goes with our take on on love in this show, um, where we find ourselves. You grapple in the song that you sang really beautifully about about awakening to the idea of love, and and there's something even deeper about watching two people create uh, to create a bond and then seeing love blossom out of that. Yeah. Uh, it's really rewarding. So it's a solid friendship um, and camaraderie that they create, and then that kind of leads to both of them having this discovery of like, oh, great, we fell literally fell in love rather than it wasn't, yeah. like, we were talking about how, um, you know, you go on a date nowadays, and, like, immediately it's like, this is what the relationship's going to be. This show, it's like, we go through so many different dynamics within our relationship until the very end when, I mean, well, we've given it away. Yeah, 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 spoiler alert. We've given everything yeah. away. <laughs> That's okay. I'm editing out what Bill said because he gave too much away, I think. Yeah, and, did he? And, and we want to be taken by surprise. I don't trust that director of ours. <laughs> It's like your song. You get taken by surprise. Yes, yeah, yeah. Perfect, yes. A funny thing happened on the way to... On the way to Desperate Measures? Yes. A funny thing happened on the way to the... Where are we? And on the way to the... The, the saloon? The, the saloon? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. It looks really... For once, I think I'm going to like Measure for Measure because I hate that play. It's a problem. It's a problem play. And it's a problem to watch that play. Well, you see, I did it I did it a couple of years ago, and I, and I have a soft spot for it. Um, but this certainly elevates it to, to see though to see it to see it treated in a musical theater context uh, it, it elevates it elevates it in a way that I think was is gonna surprise you I'm looking forward thank you thank, thank you. you so much uh, yeah 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 of course no of course they'll swing by um Peter Peter's Peter's lyrics I, I think the show the the what am I trying to say? The libretto for this show is written in meter, in rhyming couplets, and still achieves within that 
it still achieves, I wouldn't say within that, I think because of that, achieves this incredible gravity and depth. And the same is true for Peter's lyrics. They're absolutely stunning. Yeah, so it's a gift. I know we hadn't mentioned that it's in verse and rhyming couplets. Um, it's really fun even to watch scenes that I'm not in and like I start to hear it because it's so subtle. Um, but it's really fun to listen to. Like it, it really makes you an active listener, I think, yeah. also. Yeah. So, so do you like, is it, you have the music carry you through the day then? You're, you're constantly thinking of it? Yeah, I always get other people's songs in my head. Yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. I never sing my own songs at home. I'm singing your song that you sing at my face. Yeah. It's a good song. Oh, I'm sorry, they, they, nice talking to you. Nice talking to you, too. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> now you can see, make sure you stay in the frame. Yes. Okay, here we are with... Lauren Molina. And Connor Ryan. You're the comic sidekicks, aren't you? Well, we are, but I will say that everyone is really hilarious in this show. I mean, from start to finish, this show is full of comedy, and um, yes, we are We are the sidekicks. I play the um, saloon girl who is, you know, sort of, in, well, she's in love with Johnny Blood, who is wrongly convicted of a crime and sent to hang, and I kind of come in to save the day by doing, a, a, doing the deed with the, uh, the governor in a in a way that I won't, I won't spoil the show, but if you know a desk, or if you know measure for measure, you know how it works. <laughs> and you're not happy about it. I'm not happy one lick about it. No, I, 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 I played Johnny Blood, who the start of the show is, um, is set to hang for uh, shooting a man who treated his lady a little rough. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, the plot, in which the the yeah, the, I mean, the, no, the scheme no spoilers, which, yeah, but right. the, the sheriff comes up with an idea because uh, he so basically here's here's the the story in a nutshell so Johnny's set to hang and uh, the sheriff uh, goes to Johnny and says do you have any next of kin that we can go to the governor to plead your for your life and he says well I have a sister but I haven't talked to her in a while sort of in a strange situation and then the sheriff finds her uh, as a nun to be so she's about to take her you know oath to become a nun very shortly and um, and so the, the nun um, Susanna says okay well I'll go to the the governor and the governor says well I will he she enters and he's smitten with her and the governor says well if uh, if I break one of my vows of justice then you have to make one of your vows um, of chastity and you know the, that actually seems fair to me yeah yeah you know pretty balanced and so um, and then the sheriff comes up with a with a plot to um, in the dark tell Susanna to, to agree to it with the governor and then in the dark they're gonna switch out the nun with a saloon girl come in yours truly to uh, dress as a nun and then madness ensues but they pick my saloon girl and I'm not having any of that so I just realized I mean you're so obviously experienced and a nun is not experienced so how did you fake at, you know being unexperienced well you know what the saloon you're a pretty good actress as your character even that's right that's right well you know and that is actually one of the songs is them oh. teaching me how to behave like a nun <laughs> and so yes like a lady yes exactly right. um, so yeah <laughs> but you know you're just gonna have to come and find out yourself but think of all the fun you can have later when she dresses up as a nun later on. Exactly, you're telling me. Yeah, we have a little bit of that fun in our show. Come check it out. So do you have to spend the entire time in jail? Uh, I spend a lot of time in jail. Yeah, it's 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 good for me. I can I can sit and recline for a while. That's rather confining in a musical. You can't kick up your heels very much. Well, that's what you might think, but you'd be surprised. The magic of theater. We can open cages and. And suddenly have dance moves. And, yeah, and prison cells and musicals have plenty of space for dancing. <laughs> oh, we want to see you kick up your heels too. Well, <laughs> good. <laughs> well, enjoy and break a leg and kick up those heels. Awesome. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Yeah. Thank you are with Bill Castellino. Who has directed this incredible musical measure from Measure called Desperate Measure? Thank you. We're really excited about it. 
I, I think it's just it's amazing how they turn measure for measure into this wonderful, lighthearted saloon western rom. It's an amazing inspiration that they decided to use this play as the source. Uh, Peter laughs that it's well one of the few Shakespeare plays that has not been turned into a musical. But there's a reason for that. It's a really complicated one, and it took a mind like Peter's to figure out how to turn it into a musical. And it is one of the funniest scripts I have ever read. And the score is pretty remarkable, too. I know, I'm stunned because I was saying I absolutely despise Measure for it's a, it's, be a, it's a problem for us to see it. Right, well, you know, it's interesting. It's about justice. And, you know, Shakespeare is no slouch. He really had a few things to say about it. And when you get to the essence of that part of it and then translate it to a sort of knee slap and musical, some very interesting things happen. I mean, justice is an elusive thing and it's relative. And, and all the gray areas that sometimes try to get erased, there are some and this play explores really what is fair and uh, and does it with beautiful songs and really funny script it's fun. it's amazing how Shakespeare does so well in the in old west yeah you know wasn't it with came of the shrew also and and, and um, the, um, the Kiss Me Kate, whenever they put it in the Old West, it seems to work. Well, I think there's something to the poetry of it, and the, and the very clever idea of doing our musical Desperate Measures in verse really makes a difference, and it elevates the whole thing, and I think it's the kind of poetry, the cadence of that Western accent that has attracted a lot of people. So you you have such luck at the York. I mean, this this is like your home away from home at this point. Without a doubt, this is one of my favorite places on the planet. The York Theater it makes you feel welcomed. It is nurturing. It helps you get to the best of yourself and make the best kind of work that you can. And Cagney is opening October eighth in Los Angeles. Wow, that, that show just dances all over the world. Yeah, it's pretty thrilling. We're very excited. Right after we open Desperate Measures, I'll go out there and we'll, we'll open that little thing, the little Cagney play at the El Portal Theater in North Hollywood. Wow, that's fantastic. Yay, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Of course. Here, you go. here we are with David Friedman, composer. Peter Kellogg, book and lyrics. So, did you, did someone get the idea first and go to the person, or how did you figure this, how did you come up with this? Um, you know, uh, as we said, uh, we wanted to do a country and western score because we'd already done two regular musicals, and... Uh, oh, you worked together before? Yes, we have uh, Chasing Nicolette, or Alcassana Nicolette, depending on the, you know, the production, what we call it, and we have a musical about Nellie Bly. And uh, we have a musical about Lincoln that no one wants to do. And then we have this one. And uh, this was our chance to do a country score. And Measure for Measure made a, a wonderful Western because everything works well as an, as an analogy. So. so Peter hands me a completed script and, and lyrics. And then what I do is we talk about it for months and months. I don't write anything. And we shape it and we, you know, change it and stuff. And then I write songs very quickly. And I was very thrilled with this one because this piece is a... One of the things we really like to do is talk about very important issues in a humorous and light way so that I think that the information gets in because people are laughing and this is very light but it also is very much of the heart and it's very much about things that are very important today about uh, morality and about how people treat each other and about corruption and and it's all done in a very light and entertaining way so then it can really hit you when it needs to and so we enjoy writing this I love doing the country score we have a full country band for this and uh, it's it's something we're really thrilled that we're getting to present to New York uh, at this time. It's, it's, it's time has come around, and we're very excited for everyone to see it. And also, this you finally turning sh this play, which is a problem play, into something enjoyable. And you're going to want pe people might actually go and back and see the real measure for measure, because now they can, like, think of something pleasant while watching it. Yeah. There, well, actually, there is humor that in the original measure for measure that we take some of the scenes and... You know, they can play humorously. I don't know why Measure for Measure isn't more popular as a play, but... Uh... Well, I mean, well, come on, it's got a whole... Well, <laughs> it's a horrible subject matter. That's the point, is, is to take that horrible subject matter 
but there's something funny under it if it's written a certain way and you're not sitting there thinking I'm seeing something horrible. You're sitting there really enjoying it and yet getting the message and you know here you know who to hate and you know who to love and you know what to wish for and you know what you hope happens and we hopefully this play has uh, more twists and turns and it takes you on a very surprising ride and so but these these important issues that that play brings up perhaps it brings them up too much like this and we found the humor in it for our show so and nothing better than a musical comedy than have a real bad guy and a real, you know, pure ingenue type. That's right. That's and then have the comic funny characters as well. Although it's funny because no one is no one is quite what they seem necessarily and people who are pure are not so pure and people who it's this asks a lot of moral questions this play and has a lot of humans in it so it definitely is not you know a cartoon or a caricature it's it's people really struggling with issues but always funny and then you're laughing 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 opens people up emotionally and so what we really try and do is really get people laughing and then when they're wide open touch them with something so that's what we're trying to do here and what made you think that that you could do this to measure for measure what gave you what inspired you that thought this would make a great western comedy well i just say there's an analogy for everything you know the uh the the uh, saloon girl uh, is the 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 nun in um in measure for measure becomes a nun in a franciscan mission the Duke character becomes the governor. Um, the 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 woman who's substituted in the bed trick. We use a saloon girl, so everything just works out nicely as an analogy for the West. Well, it looked like a lot of fun. I can't wait to see it. Oh, we can't wait to have you here. We really we really enjoy doing this, and we hope everybody else does too. You can see up there, they're having the time of their life. Oh, this cast is amazing. Oh, they're wonderful. Oh, yeah, God. they're wonderful. They're our dream cast, so we're very excited. And so we hope everybody comes to the York to see us, and we, you know, we want to move this on and really uh, play this for as many people as we can, and we're thrilled to be in New York. God knows we need this right now. <laughs> we do, too, yes. <laughs> we do, yeah, we do feel that way, that this is a, you know, if you can find a way an to laugh and still be in the issues, you know, it's not like, oh, just go away from it. We're talking about what's going on now, but we're laughing while we're talking about it, and that's what we're really going for here. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is fun. Now you see me, now you don't. Oh, that's a different one. <laughs> that's Bessel Whorehouse. Here we are with... Nick Wyman. And you are in desperate measures. And I am. Knee-deep in desperate measures. Maybe neck-deep in desperate measures. And how does it feel to play the bad guy in this? The fun bad guy with a terrible German accent. A terrible German accent? What a terrible thing to say to me. I have a wonderful German accent. It, it My feels... parents are German, oh, so... All right, then, then you have a right to say things. It's, it feels wonderful. I love playing the villains. Villains, are, villains drive the action, so it's, it's wonderful to be the, uh, the bad guy. And this is a very, very fun bad guy, and... Uh, it's it's just a delight. It's just a it's a wonderful play, very funny, very very sweet and emotional, and yet and yet very funny and, and, and heartfelt, and, and it's just a delight to be uh, on stage with these other five folks who are just terrific in the show. So I love the music that song. You got to see it almost had like a Jewish Klezmer twang to it. Yes, it's it's sort of, sort of like like um, this sort of. Pleasmer Country. I mean, you can talk to David Friedman about that as well. That, but uh, yes, it was wonderful. It's 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 great. It's fun. Yeah, it was like Ron Moody and uh, uh, Oliver. Oh, God bless oh, Ron Moody. Yeah, what a what a wonderful Fagin he was. I, I say say to people, basically, I have one. I played Fagin when I was like eighteen, and basically, I've been recycling that performance every every five years since then. Ah, that explains it. I guess it, it came through. <laughs> there we have it. Now you have my ter terrible secret that I'm basically just. I have one performance in me. That's all. Oh, that's not true. So, what do you think about your character now? I love it. Because, I mean, I'm saying he's a bad guy, but you don't think you're a bad guy. You think you're an upright citizen. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm the best citizen. I'm, I'm a wonderful citizen. This is a, oh, this is such a, a messy, sort of like disorderly, irresponsible, it needs a good, you know, Someone to put some order into this, into this, you know, into this. Yeah. 
uh, bring order out of chaos, and I am just the man to do it. And I've done a great start on it, and I know I'm going to be recognized by Washington, and they're going to make me, you know, governor when it becomes a state, and it's going to be a great thing. And I'm a very, very pleased with myself, and I'm, you know, and uh, sadly, I don't have the people backing me up that I need to have in order to create the best possible, you know, society here. I think the sheriff is just sort of like this wishy-washy, you know too easy on crime sort of guy and and there are all these drunks and 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 saloon girls and people like this and we need to sort of you know clean up the streets and by god i'm the man to do it good for you thank you thank you very much thank you very much so what state are you in i mean i mean not the state you're in but you know are you in arizona are you in oklahoma yeah, I, I think i think it's arizona i think it's the territory of arizona in the late 1880s or so before it becomes a before it becomes a state and you know it's sort of it's the wild west and there are, you know, cowpokes and and saloon girls, and that's what it's all about. And and I am this guy from from Germany, or this former military man who is desperately trying to bring order to this uh, terrible society. So. How do you think you ended up being being so like hell bent on justice and order and all that? I mean, what was it in your childhood that that spurred you on? You think? Well, you had your grandparents were German, so you must know what I am talking about. <laughs> I, my my. Uh, <laughs> my my mother's grandmother was German, and she she was brought up with a very clear idea: there's a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. And I think that's 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 who this this governor is. There's a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. And by God, you better do it the right way, or there are consequences. Well, good luck to you, and I'll forgive you for. What you did to that poor nun. <laughs> we had a great time, that nun and I. We had a wonderful time. It looked like it. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. Thank you so much. Oh, here we are with... Gary Marachek. And uh, you, what do you do in... Oh, you're the priest, right? I'm the uh, priest who doesn't believe in God, who's a drunk. <laughs> and what's this about you reading Nietzsche? Uh, yes, I'm reading Friedrich Nietzsche, and he, uh, Friedrich Nietzsche to him uh, is the, the, the best philosopher in the world, and he says that uh, in the show. Um, and Friedrich Nietzsche doesn't believe in God, so that he, he, the priest starts questioning God, um, and so he's, he's caught between believing God and not believing in God, so in order to compensate for that, he just stays drunk all the time. Especially uh, during Mass. That's when he starts drinking, is during Mass. Well, that makes sense. You have the communion wine handy. Yeah. Yes, it does come in handy. It's very convenient. Yeah, yes, indeed. But I tell you what, during rehearsals, it's, it's extremely intimidating rehearsing in front of the composer, the lyricist, and the guy who wrote the play, and the director, because they're watching your every move. And uh, it's, uh, you've got to be, and, and this cast is so amazing. I've, uh, I've been in this business for 40 years, and, and there's not a weak link in this cast. These, these people are really on top of their game. And so it makes me stay on my toes. I mean, this, this, is, why you, this is why people should see this play, because it's so funny. And these people are so good with amazing voices. They, they can do it all. They can act, sing, dance do it all and and i just uh I'm, I'm proud and privileged to be in this show especially with bill castellano directing it i've worked with him years ago and um and i think that helped me get this job actually when i auditioned because he he, he remembered me and uh, having connections is always good in this business well it's good in any business but uh well, especially the priesthood. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. But I so enjoy this. I it's just I, I I look forward to coming to work every day and 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 conversing with the with the cast, and getting to know them and uh, and their backstory. And and I'm I'm older than most of these guys uh, in the show, and um, and so they they look up to me. But I I'm the one who looks up to them because they're so good. They're so good, and I just, uh, I encourage uh, everybody to come out and see this. It's, 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 it's a fantastic show. It really is, and only six people. What I want to know is how did a priest come across Nietzsche in the first place? How did a priest what? Come across Nietzsche in the first place. It's not like his, you know, normal reading. You know, I, it, 
that's never explained. And um, I, I've read most of, uh, of Shakespeare's plays and sonnets, but I haven't read Measure for Measure, which this play is based on. So uh, I, I don't know why he, I mean, if, if, if a preacher or a priest were approached by an agnostic or somebody who didn't believe in God, they would go, well, uh, may God have mercy on your soul. That's not going to change my mind. But he believes so much in Friedrich Nietzsche that he starts to question his own belief. And that's what I haven't gotten grips on yet. I still haven't. I still have to convey that somehow, and I and I'm having. But you're conveying it right now because you're questioning. That's true. That's true. Uh, and you can use your questioning of your character as your character questioning. You know what I mean. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a very good point. I shall take that home with me tonight when I look at my script. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning it as I speak. So yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> Sure. Happy to apply. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a pleasure talking to you. It's a pleasure, and I can't wait to see what your character does. Yeah. Yes. That's. Uh, he's. He. It's. It's a very funny character. And I'll tell you, the hardest part about this character is playing a believable drunk. Everybody can go around going, "Wow." Well, so, so, so. It's got to be comprehensible too. Yes. And the hard part. it's. It is a very hard part. He plays. He plays. Um, a happy drunk at the first. He plays, um, and then later on, he plays a drunk that's not very happy. And uh, there's only a small part in the play where he's sober. Um, and it's playing a, a, a believable drunk is, is is the hardest thing I've ever had to do because you, you can't be you can't be a caricature of a drunk. You've got to be believable, funny, and believable. Now that's that's. Probably one of the biggest challenges of my career. I've done hundreds of plays, and this is this is a, a huge challenge for me. And, and I, I think every day I'm getting a, more and more there, but I still have a long way to go. You know what you should do? Go to Toft, look up a Turgen Turgenov play. I, I can't remember the name, but was Alan Bates, because Alan Bates had to do a drunk scene, and he, it got him a Tony Award because he did it so well. Wow, I will. And you know what? I, I think the best drunk I've ever seen was... Uh, um, Only Marvin and Cat Blue is another good one. Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, and um, uh, Paul Newman in The Verdict was, I think, the best drunk I've ever seen on film. And uh, I watch it just for that one scene where he gets drunk. He's, he was amazing, but he played a sad, lonely drunk and this is not the kind of drunk I'm playing oh, no, no. so uh, uh, it's and every day when I go home I work on not only my lines and my interaction with the characters but I work on, on being drunk and, I, and I, I practice it in front of a mirror and I practice it in front of my wife and uh, and she critiques me and she said that's good that's good no I didn't I didn't I didn't buy that that's good no not that that's good and so uh, and I trust her because she's an actress too, and she's very, uh, she's brutally honest with me, which I appreciate. <laughs> but um, hopefully, I'll get there. I will get there. I'm going to be positive. I will get there. I know you will. Thank you very much. Thank you, and good luck. Thank you. Yeah. This is Desperate Measures. No, this is Peter Said. I play the sheriff in Desperate Measures at the York. No, I said, all I knew was, I knew the music was good. That's all I knew. Was, I, and I was like, I did not know the story was going to be so funny. Well, we drew it out of Measure for Measure. You know, it's loosely based on Measure for Measure. And so we're dealing with un, with universal themes. We're dealing with themes of, of love and compassion. But then within that... Uh, justice and, and, you know, the spirit of the law versus the letter of the law and what is right. Um, and it couldn't be a more appropriate time to be having this discussion, you know. And I didn't know it was going to be in verse. How difficult was it to do it in verse and not do it sing-songy yeah. when you weren't singing? Well, I'm lucky to have spent a bit of my time with verse already, so that was nice. The verse, if you, if you approach it the right way, is a great tool. You know, you can use it to twist a joke, you can use it to make your point. Um, and when, when the 
the writing is as clear and clever and well considered as Peter Kellogg's writing. Uh, all we have to do is turn up and, and say our words. It's a real gift. Oh no, that feel and wheel line got a huge laugh. Yes, yeah, always. It's very clever. It must be different doing it in front of an audience too because now you're getting our reaction. Yeah, we have the privilege of doing a good couple of weeks of previews, which in, d in the development of a piece like this is really important. And so, uh, yeah, so after a couple of weeks of previews, we've had a lot of, uh, a lot of information back from our, from our wonderful audiences and we're ready for a little run here now. Well, it's, I think it's going to run a long time. I, I, hope so. I hope so, too. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. It's lovely to see you again. It's lovely to see you, yeah. too. Come and see Desperate Measures at the York. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Anyway, here we are with... Emma Deggerstedt. And congratulations on this wonderful show. Oh, my gosh. You get to be the nun. I do, yes. It is quite different from what I've done before. <laughs> and your character gets to change the most because you're so cold and unfeeling when we first meet you. But that chair sure thaws you out. Yes. I, that's what I love about her is I get to start as one thing, and then she really is the one who has to change the most throughout the play. And she, you see her kind of, you know, start to chip away at that coldness, and then she'll, you know, something will happen and she'll change and then she'll try to go back and revert to that person that she was in the beginning and that's why it's so lovely at the end that she has to make that choice if she's going to continue with this changed person that she is or if she's going to try to go back and it's, and it's all shown in that song the love song where you keep calling it that word yeah yeah she has a hard time it, that's what that song is about it's it's her final struggle with the fact that she is feeling something she hasn't felt before and it's her making the decision if she can go back or if she's actually changed so much now where she just has to accept what's happened to her and is it difficult doing the verse because I was not expecting that yes that was um, a little challenging also because it's, it's not Shakespearean, it's kind of modern language, but done in that format. I think that was really tricky. Like, that was such a mind jumble to have both of those worlds colliding. So it was a lot of work to get prepared, and I don't know how we did it in two weeks, but we did, it's here. It's and I love the artifacts that the artifice, the artifice that you use because you you catch him out we're using big words. I mean, you, he catches you out using big words, and you catch him out knowing he has a college education. Yeah, yeah, no, I well, I, I figure out that he's dumbing himself down when really he's an intellectual, and it's silly, in my opinion. He has a lot of reckoning to do. Yeah, he, oh my gosh, he says it so much in that show. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Well, congratulations, and it was just wonderful. Wonderful. I loved it so much. Thank you so much. I... Gary Marachek. You had the funnest role. You get to be a drunken priest who loves me. I, I, well, I don't know if I have the funnest role, but if you say so, okay. I, I tell you what, I have a total blast, and I'm so blessed and grateful to be among this amazing cast. Uh, isn't everyone just perfect? I just, uh, with Bill Castellino direction and, and, and the cast, and it's, I've done over 300 shows in my life. I've uh, been in the business 40 years as an equity actor, and I can't recall a more fun time I've ever had in my career. And I... You can also tell the audience feels that because we're having a blast out there. Yes, they are, and they, 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 they didn't miss a beat. They laughed at every little facial expression, every little laugh, every little thing that wasn't even supposed to be a laugh, they laughed at. And it was a it was a special night, and I'm I'm just so honored and and, and, and proud to, to be in this cast. I know I keep repeating that, but I'm just um, it's just such a thrill, such a thrill. And uh, we've worked very hard. We've worked for the past three weeks, the, the past five weeks. I'm sorry to get to this point tonight, and uh, it's just uh, I, I can't tell you what a what a how honored I am to be among this cast. I love that one point when you raise your eyebrow, your one eyebrow, that expression was priceless. When I go like this? <laughs> Is that the part you're talking about? Yeah, oh my God, that was brilliant. <laughs> and I feel bad. First you're disillusioned with God, then you're disillusioned with Nietzsche. What do you have left to believe in? Maybe love? Uh, yes, yes, I, I guess that's... You know, I was talking to somebody who... Uh, who, who who was a priest and if your dad is a priest and you're the eldest son it's expected that you become a priest whether you believe in God or not so 
that's what I had to fight with at first. I'm, I'm thinking, if I'm a priest, why am I questioning God? But then I heard this actual priest say, well, you have to be a priest. That's You're just expected to be a priest. So when I read this thing that Friedrich Nietzsche wrote, which was a real guy, uh, I, I went, oh, I see. Now, okay, he's he's trying to decide if there is a God or not. And, uh, and I think at the end... He finally realizes that there is, and, and and above that, like you said, there is love. And uh, it, it's, it's a sweet ending for the priest. It's a sweet ending for everyone. It was a nice surprise ending. Yes, it is a surprise ending. And, uh, What's that song with surprise in it? I'm sorry? The song about the surprise. The surprise. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That was, uh, that's, that song encapsulates everything. You don't know what's happening the next day. Uh, you can't plan for it uh, because once you plan for something, something else will happen, and it's a surprise, you know? So you have to anticipate the un unanticipated. Look forward to the anticipated is what I like to say. Well put. Thank you so much. Better than anything Nietzsche came up with. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank you it. and enjoy the party and congratulations. Lauren Molina. And oh my gosh, I, it was so much more fun to see it, the actual production. Yes, I mean, it really comes to life. We're having so much fun on that stage. It's like, it's just infectious. How long did it take you to do that mirror thing with the wedding dress? Actually, um, it's one of like the earliest acting games that you can play, like the mirror game where you, you know, just follow another person like you're in a mirror. It's a Marx Brothers kind of thing, too. Hey, lover. And, and this is a guy that's just for you. Uh, Am I just for you, baby? Yes, you are. That's what I thought. Yeah, we have a good time up there. Yeah. She may say she likes to do the mirror, but she likes to do me better. That's true. That's true. The mirror just really fun. I told Emma... Well, I'm going to stop talking like that. I, um, I told Emma, who plays um, Sister Mary Jo, um, and uh, I was like, just don't plan... Don't let me know what you're going to do. I don't want to... So she does it differently every time, so it really is like I'm trying to follow her oh, movements. Man, I didn't even know that. It's great. And you, quick thinking tonight with the gun that you have to keep, you got to keep that bit in. It was so funny. I don't know if we can organize it so that the gun can break in that way every night, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed that. I was a little scary for me, but. No, this is what you can tell when a good actor, when they don't leave things on the ground, because sometimes you end up staring things at the ground forever. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I notice that, too, when I see stuff. If something's left on the ground, I, I won't be able to watch the rest of the show. I'm sort of, like, preoccupied. But it's hard to keep our eyes off the two of you. Oh, that's sweet. Thank you. Thank we you. have a good time with each other on stage and off. We are friends. So it's a lovely experience to work with Connor. Sure. <laughs> and you always end up in your skivvies, don't you? I don't know. It's really, uh, I guess, I guess. Um, I mean, it's Why fun. like that? Why would you keep your clothes on, right? Uh, Damn. And I love your pratfall with, with, the, uh, with the jail and the banging of the hat. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's really fun. We, yeah, we're, we're having a really, really good time in that scene. I hope you can tell. Oh, I can. Anyway, enjoy the party and congratulations. Everyone needs hey, to come see this, so that. spread the word. Spread Just the word, and yeah, letters. happy we got to share it with you. And I, you won't feel desperate after seeing them. <laughs> Hope Good not. One. Good one. What I like to say is it's double your pleasure, double the none. Hey. <laughs> and there's none better than you and Mary. Oh. Thank you.